Oh, it's a lovely day, guys. It's a little bit chilly, but absolutely fantastic. Look at the sky. I'm gonna go for a lovely walk later on with the boy and the dog. I'll have to take the missus as well. Uh, yeah. Let me spin you around to the fish. Here they are. The drum's working. Lovely. Oh, yes. Your Genji. I said they've had the first feed of their day. Hiya, guys. Oh, look at that. Beauty. A beauty. Stunning. Fantastic. Such a shame in the winter that you've got to have these covers on to keep the uh, the price of the electric down. Absolutely gutting. But uh, I suppose that's the nature of the beast in the UK, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is... I've got a load of fittings here that's come in the post. Which I've just dropped all over the floor, so I'll come back for those. Um, the main thing I was waiting for was uh, a ball valve, but... Um, when I bought the ball valve, I didn't realize that the people were on holiday in France. Um, so they did send it off, but I'm not gonna get it until tomorrow now, which is a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. And I think it means that I can still, um, I believe I can still drop my drum down today, uh, which is not gonna be a problem. So what I am gonna do is, Got to do this carefully again. Um, Got to take that layer of blocks off like I've already stated. Um, I'm going to measure. I did go to B&Q yesterday to, uh, to pick up um, the slabs, but I didn't want to buy more than I needed because they're 600 by 600, just the concrete ones, which look really tidy and they're nice and flat. So I'll measure this, um, go and buy those at nine o'clock, jump out, get those nine o'clock, go for the Starbucks drive through fantastic. Um, and then uh, I've got a mate on standby this time um, to give me a hand just to pull the drum to one side, put it down tidy, put the bed of um, slabs down, put the drum back in, and that'll be a massive weight off my mind. What I've also got to do, when the drum's off, I'm going to take all the electrics off and I'm going to move the electrics. Um, I think I've decided where I'm going to put the electrics. I'll spin you around now and show you guys. So that's the current setup we've got. The electrics, as you can see, is tucked down there, which worked for the Nexus. So when I had my smaller setup, as in um, um, my smaller um, filter house, Mr. Miyagi's Love Hut. So what I'm going to have to do is move that, and I think I'm going to put it there. So I think I'll mount them on the wall here. Um, I think that's the only place I could have them really. I was thinking about doing it up there, but if I do it there, it's a bit of a nightmare because I don't know how much residual, you know, spray I'm gonna get off that. Um, so it's probably not a good idea to put it there. Um, and also, possibly, possibly in the future, that is gonna be above the little pond in the section I'm gonna do there. So I think realistically, boom, we'll put the electrics there. It is out of the way of everything. I'm gonna get rid of all this water in a minute and I'm gonna to try to get a new Jubilee clip for there. I think I may have one, I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll um... Oh, hey boy, what's this one? I think that's a four inch. Ow, bagger. Yeah, that's a four inch. So anyway, um, so that's the plan for today. Um, electrics, and if I can get that drum done as well, I will be well happy and then I've got a load of uh, fittings, like I said, I can start doing this waste really neatly um, and I can start changing. Well, I want to change this inlet down here to a two inch. At the moment, it's a 1.5 inch because that's all I had. So, um, and also, this fitting here is a 1.5 inch. So, we're coming off this two inch, two inch. So, that's a 1.5 inch, which is fine because that's, that's going to be slowed down this... Um, this uh, bypass into the heater. Comes up 1.5 inch, that's fine. But we dropped down to a 1.5 inch here because I didn't have any two inch rubber boots. So my plan is when the drum is out to, to change from this section 
and cunningly I've glued a two inch in there and I've got a, a reducer rubber reducer right there so we'll um, we'll change this into a, a two inch um, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is possibly bring this higher and come and come a little bit higher on the wall so I can cut across um, and that's going to work out better for me but I'm going to have to scratch my head a little bit once this drums out of the way um, we'll crack on. What I would like to achieve today is we've got that pipe running there but these lids are super heavy they're super robust it's a very well made bit of kit there so what I'd like to do is when I'm taking the lid off I could just pull it and slide it down there so I don't want a pipe there. I just want it to go straight onto a, into a, to like a, you know the surface of the floor there or something. So this can let rest down there. To that end of things, I need to move all of this electric, and I really want to put the pipe higher than the actual lid. So if I can run the pipe, I suppose level with this, it would be lovely because it will bypass all the everything. So if with this level here, so like. Yes, it should just go to there, and then what I can do then is, is come straight up and into the shower. So, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it looks um, at the end of the day. And again, guys, we've got a bit of a funny story. I don't know what I said on the previous video, but I think some people have taken it literal that I've got the drum for £3,000. I, I, I didn't, I haven't got the drum for £3,000. What it was is, I ordered this drum in the, um, was it the South East Koi Show? And the reason I picked this was because the Awaza rep was saying that these are going up to 3,995 at the end of the month. And I was thinking to myself, well, there were 3,600. And I thought, well, I'm gonna obviously profit 400 pounds from pre-ordering one then but I didn't intend to have the drum until the prices shot up. So in my mind, I was working it out. I was thinking to myself, okay, so I'm actually gonna get this drum for three grand because I'm pre-ordering the drum with a deposit at the time when it was 3,600 and the price I got for my Nexus has allowed me to get this drum to well, basically to part with 3,000 pounds, which is a phenomenal amount of money. Do you know what I mean? However, I'm hoping this thing's going to last for the rest of my life. So, um, I'm not. I, I, I've had a couple of comments going. Where can I get that drum for three grand? Where well, you can. I separated physically with three thousand pounds worth of cash for it, but that's because I got money from my Nexus because I sold it to one of my mates, and uh, and I bought it at a time that it was l less in money. So, um, so I basically got it. A, a, you know, kind of. A thousand pounds cheaper than I would have if I hadn't have sold the Nexus and got it at the time when it was cheaper. So that's the reason I got this for three thousand pounds. But they do retail now at three thousand nine hundred ninety-five pounds. Ah, you can get a car for that, a really nice car for that. So anyway, that's the reason I've got that in my mind for three thousand pounds because I only separated with that much cash. I sold something and I got it before it was shot up in value. Um, and I thought that was that was the clinching factor to get that over the Burton's drum because, well, by the time I got this drum, uh, I, I I had loads of money off it. Do you know what I mean? Um, so uh, so yeah, that was the reason why my cognitive thinking took me to the Awaza drum, and I'm really happy I got the Awaza drum. However, the Burton's drum would have worked as well. I don't I think they work as good as each other, literally. Um, the only reason I wanted this one is because in my mind I was getting a better deal. Do you know what I mean? Because it was going up in value and and so forth. So anyway, so that's really good. Uh, we've got to talk about the Shinoda Grow and Show later on. I don't want to harp on too much about it, but we need to have a look. And I'm very, very happy. I've got some, uh, some good news for everyone. But let's crack on with this. This video is going to be filmed over the course of the day. So um, hopefully it'll look a little bit tidier in here at the end of the day and we'll get all the electrics really tidy. I'm not sure whether to put the electrics on the on the block work or on the wood. It would be a lot easier on the wood, but I was planning on putting shelves up there. Oh, decisions, decisions. Anyway, get back to you soon. Thanks for watching. 
So one of my mates has just come to see me. Wait till you see his car. <laughs> what brake horse has this got, boy? A thousand. A thousand brake horse. <laughs> Hundred grand with a car parked in my shitty alleyway. <laughs> That is the monkey's nuts. I'd much rather my Ford Ranger, Nicky. That is awesome, isn't it? Oh, don't, don't, don't know he's sleeping. Do it in a minute when he wakes up. Look at that. Awesome, isn't it? Yeah. What does that do, not to 60, Nick? I don't know. Roughly? Two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds. Top end, do you reckon? 210. 210. So if anybody's watching this with a Lamborghini <laughs> and you see Nicky, just go home, because it won't keep up with this beast. How much work have you had done to the engine? Stage three. Stage three. That is awesome. Didn't we, girl? Yeah. Before I get back onto the pond, and we're going to take the boy out on his Ford Ranger. Cute. So the boy's on his Jeep, going for a spin in the great outdoors. How sings Wolf Boy? <laughs> right, guys, I'm in the dark. <sighs> Done my family duties. We've been out for a lovely Sunday dinner. Absolutely banging. Took the little boy around the country park on his Ranger. He's happy, he's down for his little nap. Um, so I'm back now, quite keen to get everything. Good news, my four inch ball valve miraculously turned up. So that's incredible. So now I can really, really do what I need to do in here. Um, almost finished the wiring. So I've turned it off at the main um, breaker board in the garage. And um, yeah, so what I've had to do is lift it right up so they're all out of the way, but it looks neat, it looks nice, I'm happy. Yeah, so what I've done here, guys, is obviously I've, uh, I think you can see what all the things are, so they were right down there. I've lifted the isolation box up and I've basically um, daisy chained it all the way through. This section then goes to the lights, which gives that power. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct, but uh, it's been working fine. So uh, I'm going to leave that like it is. I'm going to take this little board up here. So when I connect the uh, wire to the, um, what's that called? A plug, a joining plug, a pl a plug, a, a, a junction plug, whatever. Um, I can put it in out the way. I'll tape it up and stick it up there out the way, tidy. So you just see a black um, cable going into the wall which will look tidy and then the next thing i got to do then is um, i've got the slabs for here which is just down there um so we'll go from there guys so i'll come back to you when i've done a little bit more lovely oh there we are guys super happy with that that looks absolutely a mint um so what i've done is i've given it a tiny bit of an overhang on each side so when i'm pimping this place out I can render up to the corner there because I just want it to be tidy. But um, I had some of this in the garage, which is like uh, that thin kind of um, foam flooring. It's not rubber, it's actually foam, kind of like, uh, I don't know, about 10 mil thick or something like that. But I've cut that out exactly the same um, footprint as this. And that's gonna fit on there like a treat. So um, 
got all of this done apart from that but i have hooked it up just so i can get the lights and all on um what i have got is a new ball valve collar uh that's leaving me to this now guys before i've got an idea and i don't know if it's going to work but in my head it will so comment below if you think this will work because i think it will so Obviously, when my backy shower was working, I was uh, I was gonna come down here, cork drill through here, and it was gonna come across, and it was gonna go into the pond, right? Um, however, this this little hole here is on the exact same line away from the wall as this pipe here. So I'm thinking, if I put a four inch four inch um, pipe down there, a ninety comes straight across into a T here, this water will go straight into the T and back through the drum. Um, but it will keep recycling through there until it actually does bypass through and go into the, um, into one of the uh, inlets of the pond. Um, and I think that will work. I can't see in my mind why that wouldn't work. Um, yeah, and that will save me having to take the fish out and core drill here. I'm just going to get a um, maybe a, a, a rubber 90 or a solvent fit, uh, uh, sorry, a solvent fit T or a 90 to go, uh, or a um, rubber boot to go on there. And I should be able to just come straight in front of the skimmer and straight into that. Um, I think that's a really easy fix and I think it will work a treat. Um, but let me co comment below, and, and, and I can't see any problem why that can't just keep recircling, circulating through this and that until it actually goes out. It's just gonna keep giving me cleaner water, isn't it? Um, Cause obviously next summer, my plan is to take this wall down and have the, the, the koi come in here. And if that happens, what I'll do with this is I might even put my wear back on it. So it just falls straight in, you know? Um, who knows, who knows, but that's the plan. That's all on there. I've got to find a home for this now. My mate's gonna come around in about an hour to help me lift this back on there because that is heavy and, and I need to get it so perfectly situated in there that I do need someone else to give me a hand. So um, until then, I'll keep messing around with this pipe work here. Um, I do like the way that Phil from Telford Coy has got his where he's cut this just above the surface of the, um, uh, of the, of the pond water level. Um, so he's got a rod in section um so that's can i do that or can't i do that i don't think i can do that because i haven't got a 90 obviously ah oh, but do you know what i have got another one of those collars now because i have to fork out for a full one uh, i need to find is there someone around the swansea or west wales area where i can take all of my collars and get them uh milled out on a metal lathe i need because I can get all of these collars milled back out and get them back into recirculation. Um, so comment below if you live anywhere near the Swansea area and I can take a load of my pipe fittings up to you to get reamed out, please let me know because these things are blooming expensive and I can't keep buying them for collars. Now I know you can buy collars from somewhere because people have um, commented, but oh my God, old banjo. Obviously I've been grinding out there some stonework. Um, but it will be a lot easier um, if I can just ream those out. Cheaper and easier. Just I, I, I'm dubious ordering the collars for these because I've got two different ball valve brands at the moment. And one brand won't accept the other brand's collars. Um, so obviously it's a different thread type on it. Um, anyway, if there is anyone local, let me know and, uh, and I'll pop down. I'll get you a crate of beer as well for your efforts. Good lad. Anyway, let me crack on with this and uh, and see where I'm going to get to. Oh, so many things to do, guys. All right, guys, I'm shattered again. I don't know, it's like eight o'clock or something. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day today. I've made massive progress. So um, still got a couple of problems, but... Um, yeah, not too bad. Um, I've still got a lot of time. It's so, uh, it's so much work involved in uh, in making everything look neat and uh, and and getting the things in the right, correct areas, and then running the leads and running the lines. 
Oh, boy's back. So I think I've got everything <clears throat> in the right place that I want it. Um, it's just a case now of uh, sort of cleaning, uh, polishing it a little bit um, and uh, and getting the, uh, the pipe work correct. So um, I haven't done anything to the pipe work yet, but now it's all plumbed in correctly. Um, I've got the bottom drain, the four inch drain coming in. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, I have got that idea though with the four inch um, from the backy shower going in. So um, if I want to do that, I can, I, it's still possible. All I got to do is get a, uh, a four inch T. Um, do you know guys, I think that's gonna work a treat. I think that'll be way, way more efficient than putting it back into the pond. It'll just, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's gonna be a winner. I can't see any reason why that wouldn't work. The backy shower going back into the drum and then eventually then obviously it will go back into the, uh, into the pond. I can't see any problem with that, but let me let me sleep on it and let me wait to hear what the comments say. Um, like I said, um, I've done the waist a little tidier. I'm not sure if I like it yet, but I think I do. I think I just need to. I think I need to get a 45 three-inch fitting for the bottom, and it'll be absolutely perfect. Um, let me spin you around guys and show you what I've done. Let me spin you around. So there we are guys, that's, that's my image. That's my vision, my image. That's my vision. So um, I've got uh, my isolating box, isolator, whatever you call it. That still needs to be um, tacked tidy onto there. I've got my three pumps. I don't use one pump, that, that is purely put there just for a fail safe. If any of them go wrong, then I can just plug it straight into that one. So that's a bit of a fail safe. Um, I've got um, all of my plugs at the top there. Those haven't got switches on. Those two have got, those three have got switches on. And that one's on a timer. That one um, I use for my bottom drain. So um, the fish has a bit of very, you know, like whatever, it comes on for a few hours off for half hour, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, I've put my air pumps up there. This one is a spare air pump, which I don't use um at the moment so uh but it's always nice to have a spare that come with an easy pod which was quite handy um don't look at all of these pipes at the moment are just basically i didn't want to cut anything yet so they're all there just bundled up on the floor now i've got a load of black 90 fittings and all that kind of stuff for these for this pipe work so but i'm absolutely sure that's where i want those to live and uh and everything's kosher then they will be tacked against the wall and, uh, and and gone straight into there, but they will be real nice uh, and tidy, you know? I'm quite tempted to move this to the other side of the drum so the pipe will not be visible there. It'll be on the other side, and I think that's easy enough. It's just drill in, put that grommet in, and uh, and change it to the other side. I'll, I'll block that up then with a, a little rubber block, uh, a rubber grommet. Um, so that might have to be tailored for my purposes. I think that's a that's a, that's a fair idea. Um, I'm not sure where to put that yet. I've just kept it there for times being. Um, that's just monitoring the uh, water. So the temperature's gone down to 16, 17 because it's been off. The heat pump's been off all day because I've had to move this unit off again. Uh, and uh, what we've done is we've put slabs down. So the slabs are down, I've left, a, if you can see, I've left a tiny little, um, about a five mil overhang there, so I can render that up and make it look real neat and really tidy, and I can cover up that little section there. Underneath, if you can just about see, uh, I've got that little bit of sponge. So it gives it a little bit of insulation, um, I guess, uh, but what it also does is uh, it disperses the weight uh, probably a little bit more ev evenly on the on the floor um, uh, so let's have a look so what I've done is I've reduced down from a four inch down to a three inch and the three inch comes perfectly down there I like that line it's absolutely perfect but what I might do is put a 45 on there and it will actually 
just goes straight in and that you won't get any splash back, it'll go straight down there, which is absolutely delightful. Um, I think you can see my um, four inch ball valve down there. So the valve is down the bottom there, I can get to it. Um, it's down the bottom there, that with this drum now will hardly not, you know, won't be opened or closed hardly any. Oh, I just got a leak. Um, yeah, so that really won't be, actually it's, it's, I need to open it a little bit more if you can see, it's just not quite open. So I'll, I'll tap that open in a second. Um, so this is one return valve. So uh, another job I've got to do now, now I've got everything the way I want it. I've still got a leak there, guys. It's insane. So I think um, what I'm going to do tomorrow is, uh, well, tonight I'm going to go on and see if I can get from Screwfix some six inch Jubilee clips. Um, you can see the angle of this, it, it comes right in. So, uh, you know, it's got to clamp so much rubber down before it even seals on it, on, on the actual uh, fitting. So, um, what I'm probably going to do is, um, is run a load of. Uh, black tape I guess around that a plastic black tape to pack to pack it out a little bit so that will fit on better so I think that's uh, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a good way ahead there um, got this pipe work here guys so like I said it's all still rubber booted I don't want to do anything because imagine if I would have done that all in PVC solvent welded this drum has actually moved a little bit. You can see by how, how kinked that is. The drum has actually moved back towards the pond wall, probably about three inches. Um, so I'm glad I didn't do that. I, like I said, I'm waiting to solvent fit these when everything is pucker gen and everything's working like a treat and a charm, then I will, I've got all my solvent, I've got all my pipe work, all my T's and everything there. Um, but I think what I'm going to have to do is, these are quite tidy because they run parallel across. That's nice. Um, but what I'm going to have to do is the return, which is going through here, which is still an inch and a half, um, is going to come up um, and it's going to run across just underneath these, all the way across here. One will kick down then into, well, actually, she'll probably come down. One will kick across into there uh, for that that intake there um, and then the next one then will come down and it will join onto that intake there so that's how that's going to be achieved um, I have got that spare intake there which has been really good actually that gives a, a good bit of uh, flow um, into the pond I am going to change this because um, it's very tight around you guys but somehow when I've tidied all of this section down here, I want this to to have a 90 across here and come into one of these because I want to draw into the drum from my skimmer. I think I think that's going to be the way ahead. So um, never know. This uh, waste chute might have to change a little bit. Maybe you'll have to go possibly like straight down uh, vertically or horizontally and then come across so we'll have a 90 at the bottom and it'll plop into the drain that way which is not going to be a problem but that by that way I can access these possibly better but you know it's always a jiggle it's always a squeeze it's always a squeeze I think I've repiped this pond now about half a dozen times and it is always a squeeze um, not quite sure how I'm going to sit these pumps in the end possibly they'll just sit vertically in who knows I don't know and I've got to get rid of that leak because that is a nightmare uh, but I didn't tighten that anymore that is on the limits um, and it's crazy I'm getting a leak on that one and not on that one but I just dare not um, I dare not make that any tighter because it will just absolutely pop I know it will pop um, another consideration I quite like the air pumps up there they are quite nice I'm a bit upset that that one's not matching, but they are quite nice. Um, spare brackets I had, um, and that bit of timber up there is nice. Another thing I've got to consider is where this is going to live. Uh, and at the moment, I've got a, I've got a pipe, uh, a hose pipe, 
which uh, runs through the garden and it comes up underneath here and it goes into there. Um, hmm. I would like one of the, I can't remember what they're called, but the, the proper blue pipes for water. That would be, that would be nice uh, to have that uh, in here. So that's a possibility that that might, um, that might appear at some point, at some way, at some time. But anyway, for now, there's water coming in here, which is all it, all it needs. But um, I do want to get this exactly how I want it. So, yes. So I'm quite happy with all of that, guys. That looks quite nice. I do like it. And obviously all of the things shut as well. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to be enough for tonight. But I need to have a little chat about the, uh, about the Grow and Show really quick. So, great news, um, we have sold a load of fish. Um, I haven't talked to uh, Koi Water Barn for the last couple of days, um, but we're vastly approaching uh, 20 grow and show. So that means that the, uh, hopefully if we do get to 20, um, the competition's gonna be activated. Now, I've had a couple of questions and a couple of comments from different people um, about they've, how are you going to judge the competition because some people have got a, a heated pond and some people have got a, a, like a, a non-heated pond so um, there's a few ways that we can do it but what we'll all do is we'll all have a nice chat on the 12th down in Koi Water Barn and uh, we'll come to some sort of arrangement I think it'd be nice to have a face-to-face -face and a chat to people um, but we were talking and obviously there's two prizes um, Keith's going to put in £300 gift voucher to, uh, for Koi Water Barn, uh, for, for Koi Water Barn shop. Uh, and I'm going to put a £150 uh, voucher in. And I think what we're going to do is obviously um, we're going to have one prize for the largest growth, the, the biggest growth. And we're going to have one prize also for the best quality fish. Now, I'm no expert, I've only just started, but I've watched uh, quite a few, quite a few uh, videos on um, Hyatt series and stuff like that. And, uh, and Keith was saying that he's, he's done these growing shows before and um, nine times out of 10, the best quality fish is the fish in the non-heated pond because people uh, slam the heat in, um, grow, grow the fish as big as they can, um, in the heated ponds but they don't seem to get the quality sometimes that a, a non-heated pond would get you know the the skin quality the color is better so um i think it's uh do you know i think it's a fair uh, a fair show so um you know someone's probably going to win largest growth and then someone's going to win probably best quality i i would have imagined in a non-heated pond but you know, I'm uh, I'm no expert. But what we are gonna do is, when we go to Koi Water Barn, and we all meet up there on the 12th of December, we'll have a cup of tea, we'll all sit down, and uh, we'll all discuss which is the best way to go about winning uh, the competition. So there is two prizes, um, and there will be two awards. So the best growth and the best quality Koi, I think, um, we're gonna do. And uh, when we go there, what we're gonna do is, um, we'll take everyone's name, put it in a hat, and uh, first person that draws their name out will go first for the for the choice. You know, we're not going to rush too much. You'll have a good five minutes, I guess, for each person. You'll have a nice nice five ten minutes to have a look and decide which koi you want because you are picking out of a vast amount of koi there. Um, you know, you're going to be picking out of 50, 60 fish. So um, uh, yeah, it's going to make your eyes go funny, I guess, because uh, it's going to look like a load of zebra running around the plane and you're going to be proper cross-eyed. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, guys, uh, there's, um, there's a couple of amazing um, 
videos on how to select Hayut series on YouTube. Just type in Hayut series uh, and then you'll come up and you, you, it's, a, it's a, some amazing selection guides. Do you know what I mean? Um, telling you that, you know, obviously if the koi is slightly smaller and they're, they're very dark red, there's a possibility that's going to be a male fish. Uh, the females stay lighter when they're younger, um, but they develop a better, you know, the same colour as they grow old. So it's really interesting. You should definitely watch that if you're going to come down and pick on Tuesday, on, on Tuesday, on the 12th of December, because I've been looking at them. Um, yeah, and some great tips for the, uh, you know, just for the pattern of the fish. The, the shape of the fish, the backbone, you know. Uh, so um, it's really, really interesting. Um, another great channel that um, I came across uh, last night was uh, Koi Wholesale. Um, I think they're, I think they might be above Peterborough. I think that's where it says, well, that's where it looks like on the map. I'm not 100% sure, but um, they have got some amazing high series and, and, and that, that guy on there really knows his stuff. He, he talked through, um, you know, the, about, the, uh, about the growth of the fish, how to select the fish. Uh, amazing, a, a really, really good channel. And that's not, that's not the only, um, that's not the only um, video on there as well. There's, there's a load of videos. So I'm, I'm really, really quite keen to go up and have a look at that little shop. It's really nice to have a little nose around different places. Um, Talking about different shops, I do buy most of my koi from Koi Water Barn. I think if you find a, um, a dealer you like, I'd like Koi Water Barn and I like Gatwick Koi a lot. I like Gary, he's a straight talking dude and he's got some amazing fish up there as well. But a um, couple of nights ago, I was just window shopping on the internet as you do and I come across a Shuri Yutsuri that is absolutely amazing. I just love the, the pattern of it, I loved everything about it the do you know what I mean so um uh yeah I put a deposit down for that and I'm going to be going to pick up that as well from um exclusive koi and they're in Sidcup which is just up the road from koi water barn so I'll probably leave from koi water barn and shoot up to see Kevin there and uh, and pick up that fish but uh wow it, it's amazing do you know what I mean um what I'll do is I'll put a picture of the fish up on now boom and a little video, I think, if I can get it to load up onto here. Uh, so the fish that I've uh, that I've bought is the lighter of the two. Um, the darker one is still available. It's absolutely fantastic, um, and uh, I'll also put the breeder's name up here now as well, uh, which is on the chipboard behind me. Wow, it's magic! Um, another little thing I've done, guys, is um, I was watching um, and oh my god, this thing's just cleaning that. Scares the shit out of me when that goes off. Got PTSD for God's sake. But anyway, oh, um, another little thing I've done is um, I've been looking at some channels and uh, a load of channels have, uh, have produced a mug. Um, everyone likes a coffee cup, don't they, to watch their, their koi. So um, I've just ordered 10 mugs for a laugh. Um, I think they cost me 7 99 each. Um, it's going to be about pound pound 50 for shipping 50 pence for a bit of packaging i guess so uh what my thought is i'll make a pound on every mug which means i make nine pounds and that means i get a mug for free so uh i don't want to make any money out of these guys um like i said if anybody's interested in the mug find me on fa on facebook send me a message uh, you can pay for it over PayPal or something like that, and uh, and I'll post it out for you. But I I think they're quite cool. I'm looking forward to getting it. Everyone loves producing their own little mugs, don't they? Um, I think I've done it before for my tattoo shop, but never for a koi koi channel. But um, yeah, just a bit of fun. Um, 
Anyway, yeah, so like I said, find me on Facebook. Say if you want one. There's only nine going, right, guys? So uh, if those nine go, um, then I'll, I'll make another one and uh, we'll do another nine and I'll have a free one out of it. So I'm not going to be a millionaire after selling nine mugs, but I'll get a free mug. I must be a mug. Anyway, um, the water prams are okay. We've gone up to 90 on the old TDS, but that's because the pond's been off, uh, the, the, uh, the drum's been off all day. Um, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it, guys. So um, I'm a little bit tired now. I am gonna come back in here tomorrow. Um, I've got a few things to put away. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, there is still, we do still need to sell a few of the fish for the grow and show. So um, uh, what I'll do is I'll spin you around on this special board. I'll put the, um, uh, the Koi Water Bond phone number. So phone them up and, uh, and book your place on the old grow and show. Like I said, I'm looking forward to uh, having a chin wag with everyone and just having a, having a cup of tea and have a chat, like really. Do you know what I mean? Like to meet new people in the industry, in the industry, in the, in the hobby. Um, because I'll be honest with you, without this channel, I wouldn't have known half of what I do and I wouldn't have got loads of really good comments and really good advice from people um, helping me solve problems with my fish and, and, and finding little bits and bobs. And uh, you, do you know what I mean? It's, it's really handy, to be honest. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Possibly have one tomorrow. Who knows? But find me on Facebook and get yourself a mug. Hey!